Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Today, I'd like to explore a little bit more into that Yao Kua connection, and particularly for people who are, who are tuning in uh, on YouTube and are, you know, well, what's he talking about? You know, it's a uh, it's something that takes a long time to actually cultivate because it the hip tension is something that is really built into most of us and it's it just seems like impossible when you first uh, when you first try it and uh, or else you figure out other strategies which you take you even farther away from what we're going for so the uh, uh we're gonna play around with that some and then we're also going to get into uh what's going on with with some of the motions in the the second half of the form with the with the turn and strike with fist with the turn um uh, step and, and strike with back fist, that kind of, those kind of moves. And uh, so this will be taking a little deeper into uh, into those movements. So um, uh, once you stand up, we'll get right to it. Let's, uh, let's step out and we're going to first establish the three pillars. So you want to feel the balls of your feet and set your knees. And when I say set your knees, that means you're locating them in space and you don't want to move them. They're just going to be in that one place until you do decide to move them. But the, any movement is going to be a, a very conscious thing. So you set the knees, they're unlocked, but they're not, um, they're not really bent. So if you look at it from the side, it's more like this rather than, than like that, right? And it's definitely not locked like that. So it's just unlocked. And so you can kind of sink down and allow your weight to drop down. But you're having this, you have a firm foundation there at your base that, you know, with the, between the feet and the knees that forms a really solid grounded, rooted foundation. So we have that, that's establishing our connection with the earth, and we, we feel the crown of the head, and we reach up with that, so you're lengthening the spine, you're tucking in the chin, so that you're open the jade pillow gate at the base of the skull. So just doing that it opens the, the, the floodgates for the, the, the big chi, the connection with the earth and the sky. The yang chi of the earth, or the yang chi of the heavens, the yin chi of the sky, of the, I'm sorry, the yin chi of the earth, the yang chi of the heavens. There we go. And uh, so we do that. We um, have uh, loosen up at the, at the hip joint. So you just want to turn a little bit, just kind of relax those as much as you can so you can sink down into the earth and reach out a little bit with your elbows. Nice and relaxed, just enough so you can open the shoulder joint and allow, kind of release some of the shoulder tension, which uh, uh, is a very common thing. Point and reach with your index fingers. And since we're still in uh, springtime, you want to feel those fingernails. You want to you want to feel those claws that uh, give you the wood chi that expansive young chi of, of springtime. And you wanna feel that. And so we have this, this connection here which permeates your whole body mind. The energy is flowing. You can feel it in your hands. Good. So first thing I wanna do is we wanna talk more about and, and play some more with the uh, with the Yao and the Kwa connection. So the Kwa, remember, is, is our hip joint, but we're primarily concerned with the way that the leg, your thigh, meets your torso. And right here at the inguinal crease. So if you were to sink down, like doing a squat, you know, you're gonna fold right here at the, at the inguinal crease. So that's, that's, that's how we can feel into that. And so there's that that sense. Of, but what we what we want to do is release the tension in your butt and your leg, in your in your hip joint, in your hip area, 
so that it's a, a relax into it. So if you take your, your hand, you put that right there on your inguinal crease and you set the knee. So when I say set the knee, I'm going to you know, have, do it sideways. You can see that I'm going to spiral down to the right. So as I'm going down, notice that what I'm, as I go down, my knee is not doing this, right? My knee is not jutting forward. I'm very consciously, deliberately keeping that relationship there. So all the work is happening by relaxing the muscular tension in my quad, in my hip area. And then turn back without pushing up. But then you spiral down and turn again. That's it. And you come back. So there's you're just releasing the hip joint. So it doesn't matter how, how much you release it. More important is that you release it, that you're you're just kind of settling into it. And we're creating this a feeling of safety and security in our weight-bearing leg. So that, oh yeah, we can we can do this. The, the thigh muscles are able to, to do their job, the calf muscles are able to do their job without necessarily tightening up your 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 butt or your torso as you do that. You're able to just relax into that. And so that the hip becomes this like a negative space there. You're able to to just use it for its purpose, which is to just move to direct movement. So we're able to create that. So you're locating that. So this is this is the quad, being able to do that. We'll go to the other side now, and you feel that you know, your left foot, you set the, you know, let's go to the heel of the left foot, you set the left knee, and, and then we, we're gonna spiral down to the left this time. Again, keeping the knee, the knee set. So you're spiraling down here, and we're nice and relaxed. And this, I call this a, an outside turn, and then I'm going, away from the body center line and directing, so I'm releasing down there. And notice what, when I do that, when I go down, I'm not going back, I'm not leaning back. I'm keeping my weight over that left foot so that I'm able to, and over the, the, the inner part of the foot too, I'm not going to the outer foot, not rolling out. Because if you, if you look, if I, if I roll out onto the outside of my foot, then the whole body kind of leans into this off balance situation and it causes a lot of tension, particularly along the outside of the, the leg, your iliotibial band, which is this, this uh, band of muscles here on the outside, it gets really tight and actually can, be, can become quite painful if it becomes uh, too overburdened. But if we have the weight so that it's on the inside of the leg, then the, the muscles on the inside of your leg start to balance that out and you get to relax your, your muscles and you, you're more centered as you do that. So feel that and you're just releasing down and just pause there and just allow yourself to settle into that release posture. So your quads release and you're saying, oh, what can I let go of? What kind of muscular tension in my butt and my legs and my back, can I let go of and just be able to just kind of release down into this. And that releasing into that internal, that uh, intrinsic structure of the body is what we call sung, sung, S-U-N-G, or S-O-N-G, sung. It's just a, it's a releasing into the support of your connective tissue, basically. Your muscles are not pushing away from the earth anymore. You're, uh, you're releasing down and feeling that intrinsic structure there. So then come turn back to center. So now we're gonna go the other way and same idea here, we're gonna set the knee and we're going to spiral down. We're still on the left leg, we're gonna spiral down to the right. So here, instead of the, the quad, we're folding in on the quad, this here, we're opening it up as we turn. This is more of an inner, uh, inner turn. So we turn like that. We the, the quad area that that hip crease opens up as we do that and we go back to center and then we open up that crease and then we turn back to center so doing this keeping your center over the inside of your foot as you do this 
and then allowing you to do that. Okay, now go back to your right leg and we're gonna do the same thing here. We're going to feel the, you feel the foot, you set the knee and then you spiral down to the left. We're in the right leg, but we're spiraling down to the left. We're opening this space here. We're doing this inner turn, this in, in interior turn here. As we do that, we come back to center and then we spiral down again. How much, it doesn't matter. It's the fact of being able to release this tissue here somewhat that kind of gives you an awareness of what it feels like to be Sung Kwa. And back to center. So now spiral down and just kind of release into that. So here we are, we're, oh, we're gonna settle into that. And you can feel the the muscles on the inside of your leg doing some work now, okay? And for many of us, the weight is on the outside of the foot and they don't get, these guys don't get much of a, a workout at all, but you can feel this as we spiral down here. We're loading up that the leg and the leg is doing the work instead of the tension in the, in the hip joint to create that stability. And then back to center. Okay, so now, we're going to uh, we're going to take it a step further. So this still keeping in mind this quad. So what the quad does is it we get some quad. We're we're putting in the clutch. That is, we're disengaging the engine so that so that we can then shift gears. We can we and this is where we get the yao. So the yao is this part here, that lower spine, your sacrum, your your coccyx. So that becomes the young part. That's what drives this. So what the quad does is it creates space to move into. If the quad is tight and I try to push with my yaw, uh, there's going to be resistance. And so consequently, I'm just going to, my body's going to turn and go to the side. I'm going to do, or else I'm going to turn by jutting my knee out. And, and all these things are less efficient ways of moving. So, but if we feel that release, that create that space in the, in the quad, so I'm gonna to turn to the right now in my right leg, and I'm gonna use my, my yao. So put your hand back there on your sacrum. And so you can just have that awareness. So we're gonna use that as the driving force, the yang impetus to make this, this motion. You're still releasing at the quad, so that's the yin aspect, but you want to, Drive it with the yaw, and now we're going to use the yaw to turn back to center, turn to the left a little bit. Notice that my body is vertical. You know, it's over my right foot, so about ninety percent of my weight is in my is in my right leg. But it's I'm feeling it on the inside of my foot too. If I try to to go to my, the outside side of my foot and do this, if I go like that, if I rock out here. It's going to be very difficult to execute this sun qua because my hip says, hey, somebody's got to keep you from falling over, dude. So it, uh, uh, I go back here and allow the structure of my body to do the work for me. My alignment is here on, this, uh, on the inside of my foot. So then as I spiral down to the right, releasing the qua, Okay, and the hip, the uh, the yao is turning, uh, turning the opposite direction. It's driving that turn, and then it drives it back. And so there is very little muscular tension involved in this whole operation. So you're just ah, uh, you spiral down. You're using your yao. To, to direct the, the motion, the quad to give you space. And then we're gonna to go to the, to the left side. We're gonna, the, the yao is gonna turn that way as the quad opens up as I go to, to the left and go back to center. And my yao turns, rotating, driving this sort of rotational force that that opens everything up here. The yao creates air, the qua creates space, 
and then use my Yao to turn it back to center. So what this does, that using this Yao in this way gives you that rotational power which drives most of Tai Chi Tran. And in terms of application, almost all the power you're going to get is going to be from, you know, classically they talked about turning the waist. Well, that always meant to me like, you know, turning from here, right? And and that's just my upper torso. Nothing, nothing's really happening. We really want to talk about, about turning down here. You're actually rotating your hips rather than than your waist. So your your hip bones are actually going around like that. And but to do that, we have to create this space in the in the qua and we direct it with the with the L. Let's go to the left foot and just kind of go up. Lift your heel of your right foot as you do this. You're going to feel the foot. You gotta, they, let's go into the heel of the foot. Set the knee. And feel on the inside of the foot. And you put, put one hand here on your, your qual and the other one on your yao. And so you're going to use your yao to turn the body and the qual releases. You sink into that and just kind of feel into that. So there is this yang aspect of the of the yao, the yin aspect of the of the qua, and then use the yao to turn back to center. And now we're going to turn to the spiral down to the right. So the yao, the yao turns and the qua opens, and then we go back to center. And then the yao turns, the qua closes. We have this outside turn. And we come back to center, and then we're going to go an inside turn where we open the qual. And those those terms inside and outside, you know, they they're just arbitrary descriptions. But you can think of it as opening and closing qua, but that also gets people very confused. So you just want to sink there. You're releasing down, spiraling down to the left. And sinking into that, using your yao to, to do that. And uh, keeping yourself really sunk into that left leg now, just very gently use your yao to make tiny, tiny movements, tiny, tiny adjustments where you're, you'll turn left, turn right, and just feel yourself getting more and more attuned to directing traffic with your yao. So this is something, an awareness that very few people even consider important, that you actually use your, use your yao to, to make this kind of, kind, of, uh, uh, kind of movement. And it's something that unless you spend some time as we are, where you're really looking at feeling it, it is easy to, easy to gloss over to think about once and then forget about. But I want to like really emphasize that this is an essential part of a Tai Chi Chuan form, that you want to be able to control that. So here we go, we're gonna spiral down to the right and then back to center. So just, so just on your own, just kind of go back and forth and see if you can direct it with your Yao. And that requires a conscious intent. That means you have to decide to, to use your yao because otherwise you're just going to do what you always do. You're going to, it's going to go back into a pre-conscious mode. But if you consciously choose to turn read, and, and extend with the yao, then you're able to generate this tremendous rotational force via your hip joints. It also creates stability there. And particularly for people as they get older, there's a lot of wear and tear that your hips take that come from not necessarily moving mo the most in the most efficient way that you can. And this, I find that it, it takes wear and tear off the joint itself whenever you move fluidly like this. And in addition to just creating more badass martial arts power out of the whole deal and improving your, your ability to 
to move fluidly and have a sense of balance in that confidence in your in your the support of your of your legs. So um, moving on. Um, that's your uh, that's your quan, your yeah. And I want to really emphasize that I'll call it out periodically as we're working with the uh, with the other movements and and things. I'd like to go on to um, the part of the uh, tagi form where we're going from from here and you know we're we're going like this and turning and stepping and and we're going like that so that we like to isolate that that one movement since it's repeated a couple times in this form what what happens after the strike with back fist right and each of these movements of course we can we can get deeper into it and, and I'm happy to do so but let's let's just start with your right foot is forward your back foot so you have it's, it's a nice long narrow stance you want to feel the heel of your your front foot, your right foot, and notice that my knee is almost vertical. What I'm not doing is this. I'm not pushing my knee out like that, because if you try that, you'll just notice that it hurts. You know, you, you don't want to do that. It hurts because it's a weak posture. Your body is telling you, hey, dude, don't do that. That's weak. So you set it up here. So when I set it up like this, there's almost no strain on my knee. My knee is is very happy because I put my knees through a lot of abuse over the years, but right now, no problem. It says says, oh yeah, yeah, keep 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 doing that, Rick. You're, we're very happy about that. What happens is by setting the knee like that, the structure handles it. And so now what's gonna use do the work is my muscles, which that's what they're there for. So here I am. I'm I'm like that. I'm setting my knee and um uh, and I'm my hand is I like that. So I've got my right fist. And notice it's I'm reaching straight forward like that, right out from the from the shoulder. So it's not out like this, not like that, not over the, here. It's just straight out. And I got three fingers on the forearm. So there's you want to you want to feel that that connection there. This is something that is um, oftentimes glossed over. And you'll even see masters, you know, just kind of, just kind of do, faking it. But there is a, you know, in the, in the you, you want to be able to do that, have that as a, uh, as a thing. So you're conscious of that connection there. You're consciously feeling that connection with your forearm, with your fingers. There's an energetic aspect to it that I don't think it's, it's, it's useful to ignore. So we, we have this, the, uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to feel the heel of the, the back foot, the left foot, right? We wanna feel that and that initiates the process. We set the heel and then we set the knee. So the knee is not gonna move once I, once I get it. So wh what I'm not doing is this, I'm not rocking back like that, okay? Notice what's happening is without the hands here, I'm just going to, set the set the go on the heel of my left foot i'm going to set my left knee and then i'm going to release the claw of my left leg and what happens is i'm opening so my claw is i'm opening as i'm turning to the right i'm spiraling down to the right as my knee is still pointing that way still pointing forward so there's there's this as i do this notice it's I'm setting my uh, um, the heel of my foot, setting my knee, and then as I turn, the my claw opens like that as I as I do that. I'm using my yaw to make that turn. So so my weight is my right leg. I start off there, but not for long. I'm going to go to the heel of my back foot, set my back knee, and then I'm going to use my yaw to turn to the right. I'm going to spiral down to the right. I'm going to open that left. Claw and ah, sink into the left claw as I do that. Notice how far back I've gone. I'm not going back to here. I'm just going er, to there so that I'm right over my supporting foot, my left foot. So I'm here, 
I set the heel of my left foot, set my knee, and then spiral down to the right. Use my yaw and spiral down to the right with that. And notice as I as I spiral down to the right, I'm not doing this, right? I'm what I'm doing is I'm I'm spiraling down and keeping that as I my fist is staying straight ahead as I do that. Okay, because we're going to be moving the, the fists momentarily, but we start off, we're establishing this, this pulling apart, these things, poles in opposition, which create the energy here. If I'm here like this, and I go like that, so oh, I'm, my body, what's it doing? My body's going backward and, and rotating while my fist is staying right out there. So I'm pulling uh, those poles in opposition as I do that. So here I am, and so, oh, okay. Well, that, as I do that, what's gonna happen with my left hand, I'm going to, oh, I'm gonna, as I go down like that, I'm going to bring my left hand, circle it up and out. So you can see it's like, like this. There's a little arc here. It's not just out layer like that, it or, or straight out. It's circling up. It's a gentle kind of, ah, oh, like this. There's, you know, you can think of the martial application as you're, you're, you're bringing this hand up into the, you know, into the, the face. Throat, chin, nose, eyes, whatever. As you're, oh, you're just bringing this hand up. But it gets its power by what? It's extending from, it's extending out, up and out, as your body is going down and in. So we get these, oh, this, we're stretching the rubber band. You know, we're, we're creating chi flow by uh, spiraling down, reaching out. So there's that spiraling down, reaching out. So the hand comes up and reaches out here. And notice that the palm is forward as you do that. You're reaching out. You kind of you can feel like you're cutting with the with the knife edge of the of the of, of the hand there as you do that. So as you you feel your yao, your yao spirals down, right? You're opening the claw and your left hand is Spy reaching up, it's circling up. It's create that little arc there. But wait, there's more. So we're going from here, we're gonna spiral, reach up there as we spiral down, and oh, we're gonna reach back with the right elbow. But it's more just kind of following the body. Notice that what I'm not doing is this, right? I'm not 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 doing that. I'm just I'm going. Boom, and the, the right arm comes like, ah. It's just a very relaxed kind of thing. So I've gone here, from here to uh, here. And notice that my elbow doesn't go back past my body as I do that. What happens if I bring it back too far, then I create shoulder tension there, which stops the energy, not just in my shoulder there, but it interrupts this, the whole body circuit, right? It's like creating a kink in the hose and the water just doesn't flow as well. So this way it's like, oh, if I'm doing this, then everything is coming from this yao qua combination here. I'm creating, I'm creating these poles in opposition. Left hand is out here, right hand is pulling back and it's all being directed by this this rotation of the hip joints, of the, of, the, of the hips, rather. The joints are opening, creating space, and the yao is making up. So we're, we're here in the right foot. You feel the left heel, then you, ah, oh, you set the left knee, you use your yao to turn, spiral down into the into the left leg, turning, spiraling down to the right. This left hand circles up, and your right elbow comes back. So you have this. And just kind of 
sit into that for a moment. You want to feel yourself and get comfortable feeling yourself about, you know, about 80% supported in your left leg at this point. You're, you're here like this, you sink into that left leg and ah, you're, you're reaching out. So everything above your waist is very relaxed, very soft, okay? All these movements are, are quiet and, and there's no extraneous muscular tension. But if you just hold that for a moment, and feel the reaching outward with the left hand pulling back with the right. Your body is, is spiraling down to the right. You can feel that energy flow that's getting created by all these things working together. And it's only whenever we slow it way down like this that it becomes so apparent that, oh yeah, this is, we are generating a, a massive amount of energy in this. If I if I'm just kind of going like this, right, uh, not not much is happening, right? I'm I'm going through kind of relaxed movements, and that's kind of nice. But if I'm ah oh, reaching out here like that and spiraling down, locate, really feeling that an earth connection with my my left foot, reaching with the crown of my head, and feeling the 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 heaven connection and and the uh, from the crown of my head, and I'm pulling the pulling back the bowstring with my right hand, reaching out and holding the bow with my left hand. Now I've got some real real chi happening there. So we're just doing the opening part of this 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 movement here, right? We're just doing this, and all that potentiality is lying there, waiting for you to open it up, right? And this is just the first part of it. Okay, we're Oh, we're creating this energy potential, this massive energy potential that the same thing we do when we pull back a bowstring. We're creating this potential energy in this from these things in conflict. So the the bow is conflicted. You're pulling back the bowstring. What does that do? Is that compresses the, the length of the bow. It makes it shorter as you do that and distorts the frame of the bow, which it says, I want to go back to where I was before. So then when you release the string, it's like it springs, springs back to where it wants to be. And the string goes shooting forward and with it goes the arrow. So that's what's happening here. So we're here like this. We feel the heel of the left foot. We spiral down to the right and use our yow. Okay, as we turn, the left hand circles out there, right hand pulls back. And you're letting go of your muscular tension, and all this is happening mentally. You're using your, your conscious, intentional awareness to, to make all this happen. You're, and you're consciously feeling and doing as you're doing it. Because what we're going to do now, we're going to do the next step. We're going to, we're going to, push the right knee forward. We're going to feel the right heel, push the right knee forward, and establish the foundation for the, uh, for the next part of the movement. So that, that, that knee has to be in position, and we have this stable structure that, that, is, that, is, that is there before we shift into it, before we go from, from from being predominantly back foot to being predominantly front foot, where there's this point here where, oh, I'm just gonna push that knee out and establish that position over the right heel, even though my weight is still happening mostly in my back leg at this point. So here I'm like this, I'm still my back leg, I push my knee up, and as I do that, I use my yow to spiral down, use my yow to I'm going to spiral down into my right leg now. And as I do that, my weight is smoothly transferred into my right foot. My right claw, my right leg is happening there. So, so I'm going, I'm going from, from here and I'm spiraling down to the right, reaching out, up and out with that left hand, pulling back with the right and then spiral, feel the right heel 
set the right knee and then spiral down to the right again. This time, not the left leg, but the right leg. So the right claw, and instead of opening, this claw is closing. It's, it's I'm folding in on that. All right, I'm going uh, like this and use my yow to drive that, that and the right claw over like, or closes like that as I reach out. So that gives me, so I've created even more energy as I do that. I'm loaded up in that right leg and I'm ready to now use the rotational power of my hips to drive my right fist forward as I turn. I'm using my yow to turn and drive that right fist forward. My arm is very soft. I'm not using any muscular tension to do this. I'm just reaching out with that right fist. It's being driven. It's the arrow that's being driven by the, the bow of that, of that turn of the waist there. Then I place my three fingers on the forearm as I reach out with that right hand. Uh, I'm going from here, I feel the, the heel of the right foot, push your right knee forward, spiral down to the right. Okay, I'm still holding that left hand out there and my right fist is still pulling back and now I'm going to ah, uh, uh, reach forward with that right hand and the left hand comes back onto the forearm. And here I am reaching. And just kind of pause into that moment there. So now I have this, this stable structure and my, my body is facing forward and I'm reaching out with my right hand. Notice that the right fist, I'm not reaching out to right about a little more than halfway, about three quarters of the way out my fist. So, and, and I'm, I'm like this. So that really feeling the stability. So what's happening as a punch, what's happening is this is coming out and this is reaching out, but it's being driven by my leg, by the rotation of my, my the turn of my waist. In physics, they call this angular momentum. So rather than things moving in a linear direction, so linear linear momentum is, is things all, all going in one direction, right? Angular momentum is that, that things that you're going like this, like you're, you're throwing a, a football, say you've got, you got like this, you're, you're reaching out there, the, the, uh, the body goes back like that and it goes out like this, there, there's a, uh, things are working against each other to create, amplify the, the, the structural movement. And uh, what we're adding to that is even greater, and that is by changing our internal dynamics, we're removing the impediments that come from muscular tension as we... Uh, and we're just allowing the body to express the energy in the most efficient way possible. So let's go back to this. And we're going to feel the heel of the, of the left foot and set the left knee, spiral down, use your yaw and spiral down to the right, circling up with the left hand, right Elbow comes back and right fist. Feel that connection there. So now feel the heel of the left foot. Push your left knee forward. Set that. And you're releasing down into your quad. You're, you're folding in on that. Your yaw is turning to the left as you're, you're spiraling down to the right. And then you then use your yaw and go to the ball of your foot for the yang part of this. So you, you're connecting up the ball of your foot with your yaw, and you're using the two of those together to create this yang impulse and drive the fist forward. Okay. Your back leg is almost straight. Notice that it's a, it's a narrow stand. It's not, not like a traditional, uh, like a many uh, 
Both stances have more of a, 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 a width of stance, a shoulder width. This is long and narrow. So we're here like this and we're, we're punching like that. Okay, so um, let's go back to the beginning and go through the whole form and uh, at least up to this point and um, um, we'll do it. I'm not gonna talk you, you through it and then we'll, we'll do a little Q and A after that. All right, so let's, uh, let's begin. Get your three pillars set, your central equilibrium, your quad, release your hip joint, your energetic coherence with your fingers, feel those fingernails, get the wood chi going, reach out with your elbows, reach up with the crown of your head, and begin.
Let's take it all the way to the end so that for those of you who know the form already. Please take a seat. Hopefully not TMI. Is good. Great, good. Uh, anybody have any thoughts you want to share with the nice folks? Are you speaking, Nick or Lynn? I, I haven't formulated my thought yet. Okay, um, Jonathan, get your hand up. Why don't, you, uh, why don't you formulate? We'll get back to you. The foot really makes a huge difference. You weren't emphasizing it, but the, you know, your foot was at an angle, your back foot when we were, the move we were doing in the beginning. And it, it, it's a huge difference if that foot is straight or at an angle like that. I don't, in how the qua, your whole relation to the qua changes dramatically. Yes, I agree. You're right. Not something that I, uh, I don't think I emphasize it today, but uh, that is that's a key thing there. You want to have the the foot at, at a you know at a forty five or some forty five, yeah, forty five is yeah. nice. You know at that you can. Uh, uh, I think it helps. Yes. Cool, Valerie. Um, I know you've said this multiple times, but I don't think one can say it too many times um and that is let the legs do the work mm. not not the hips not the not the qua you know don't take that tension there let the legs do what they're designed to do um i don't think that can be said too many times great <laughs> thank you well, well stated lynn so i have a question um and that is, it's about the legs. <laughs> so when you are going back, so you, you've, you you know, stepped and done this, right? And then you're gonna set the back leg and go back into it, right? Yeah. Um, and turn to the right, turn the quad, open the right quad. Um, do you have a feeling of going up, a feeling of going down in the back or neither? Uh, it's a feeling of going down. Okay. Okay. That's, when I say sink into the claw, that that's the down part there. It's there's a okay. Yeah, definitely because an up would be require some 
you know, you're fighting gravity at that point, you're pushing away from the earth. And this is the opposite. This is a sinking in that- But uh, the that, knee isn't moving. That's, that's the key part there because the usual way people solve this riddle is just by moving their knee around, which then compromises the posture and creates tension throughout the whole, the whole body as you do that. So by establishing a firm foundation with your knee on the weight bearing leg, then you're, you know, you're much better shape to, uh, to let go of tension above that. Okay. You have a, you have a, a stable structure, one that you can trust. Yeah. Good question. Anybody else? Okay. Yeah, Lynn. Well, I want to go to your, you know, your structure that you can trust. You said this a lot, you know, earlier on, you got to, people worry because they don't trust their legs. And I thought, well, that's just silly because I trust my legs. You know, I, my legs are strong. I've been doing this for a long time. I trust my legs. Right. right. Um, so I would, I didn't think it was silly. I just thought it didn't apply to me, of course. <laughs> um, <Okay. laughs> I to those out there in you know to the musketeers at home um the um I had the joy of working with Rick last weekend uh in New York and we were working on something at from another form that I do and I trust I couldn't quite figure out how to make the move forward without doing something more with my knee. Like I, it's not that I tr didn't trust my leg. It's just that I didn't know it was capable of doing that much in the claw that I, I was able to do with it. Right. And so that was a real eye opener to try to realize that, you know, there's so much more relaxing in the claw and releasing that you can do, which allows you not to have to move that knee around. Right. This is something that I think it's important for people to realize because it's easily glossed over. And you've been doing that form for decades. And and so there you you have you've developed workarounds to uh to 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 make it to make it happen, to get to the to get to the place you wanted to go, but along the way that you know that that total tr faith in your ability to to support yourself structurally and stay rooted, you know, and then lift up the uh, other leg, you know, it's like, it's like, what, what, what happened? Like, I, <laughs> where'd it go? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it was just because you were asking me to do it right. And I hadn't been doing quite right. Right. In terms of the, the joint before. So yeah, it was a surprise. Like if we, if we choose to remain rooted and connected throughout the whole form, then we've got to break it down and notice every time when we cheat, you know, <laughs> whenever we whenever we don't know. And if you don't have someone there to push on you and to test you out and say, oh, yeah, then you can convince yourself that, oh yeah, I've got it here. And then, you know, someone goes over and ping and you go, ah, then it's like, whoa, I didn't have it. Nearly like I thought I had it. And exactly. yeah. back to the drawing board. It's like, oh, I have to fundamentally change my relationship to my body to make this work. And that's a that's a retooling that is time consuming and expensive. And the the conscious mind doesn't want to necessarily make that investment right but off the bat. When you when you've done it, you have a Ferrari instead of a Toyota or whatever. You know? yeah. I mean, like when I got it right, it was oh, beautiful. Yeah. beautiful. <laughs> yeah, you didn't, you didn't want to leave that posture once you, were, <laughs> once you were in that posture, you didn't want to leave it. It was like, oh, wait. <laughs> I, found, I have found the holy grail. <laughs> okay, now now I'm I'm salivating. I am going to have to be with them. They're going to have to show me what they're talking about because I do that same form. It's, I guess come on over. It's okay. a reengineering process. Yeah, yeah. it is. It's, 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 it's a discovery where we get, keep taking the things that we knew, we thought we knew really well, and then 
look at them in a fresh light and it's like, oh, wait a minute, I'm just scraping the surface here. I can go so much deeper. Richard, you had something. Um, I was I was trying to think of how to say this, but what you said just a couple of sentences ago helped me. Um, it's helpful to me to, instead of thinking of the transitions in the form as gathering and expressing muscular tension, gathering and expressing energetic. Uh, yeah, I'm gathering, and that, this also helps me when we go really slowly, as I think to myself, gather, 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 and I'm gathering energy. I'm accumulating, 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 and then expressing not the muscle, but the energetic uh, movement. Right. That that seems to help. That seems to help me, especially when we go really slowly. Great. Great. And so it's, a, it's a hard sell to a, yes. a, a body that they said, no, no, muscular tension is good. That's I. I've been doing this my whole life. Why? Why give up now? It got me. It got me here. You know <laughs> exactly. You know, and to say what? Give all that up? You have to have a. You have to have a Ferrari waiting for you in the garage. That uh, that you're learning how to drive to be able to to uh, you know abandon the you know the 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 tricycle that you rode in on. It's like, it's like wait a minute, you know. But but it got me here, you know. No, no, there there's something better, something better waiting for you. And so, yeah, that's that's why the uh, you know the very detailed explanation of what we're doing here tonight, you know, is uh, it's like, hey, let's break this down. And it's not for everybody this this kind of uh, this focused examination that we just did. But this is this is how we get there. This is how we how we really make the jump into something which is supranormal. It's something which is, you know, uh, you can't see it you know, from the limitations of your rational mind and your five senses. You gotta go into this other place where, where you see things very clearly. And that's the fun part. Great, anybody else? Jonathan. I, this point I always keep making, but since we were doing it today of going so slowly into the qua, just that reminder to everybody how invested we are in that tension that we're releasing right. and how emotional. I mean, for me, it is. I, I you know, I <laughs> I call it the Afghan pass. Like, really, there's a lot of danger to make this little adjustment. I'm like, and so I'm, I'm always, I mean, well, I've been doing this three decades with you and I'm still, conf I confront it every time. Every time I'm, I'm that, you know, that, the, that's, if, that's if I'm, if I'm really paying attention, I'm, I'm, it's not just, oh, I'm relaxing, like, you know, into my qua, my intrinsic structure. I'm like, whoa, I'm letting go of a lot of panic here for a moment. Or what, what is this panic that I'm holding on to that I'm trying to let go of completely and never can completely because it's emotional. It's panic. It's not just a simple muscle tension. You're relaxing. You're relaxing a whole set of psychological whatever that's holding that tension. Those are so much involved in that little tiny relax into the intrinsic structure of the qua. You know, I'm just it, it, a lot is involved. A lot hidden in those words. Yes. Lot. Thank you. That, 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 that's a very encouraging for particularly for people who tried it once and said, nah, too complicated, or I, I just don't get it, or whatever. So what you're what you're telling them is that no, no, every every time you do that, there, there's a payoff. It's not like Oh, if I do this for 30 years, then things will be right. It's like, no, no. Every time I go there, there's a payoff. There's there is a reward that I can let go of things which I've been clinging to that are, you know, are not necessary, that they're, you know, they're extraneous information that is actually counterproductive. Yes. Valerie. This may seem silly, but it's important at the same time. When we were, say we were on the right leg and we'd set the knee and we say you turn inward, all right? So you're turning to the left and the qua opens and then you turn to the right and the qua closes. That's but simple, but so important to understanding 
what an open qua versus what a closed qua actually feels like. It's, you know, very easy movement, easy to do, but aha, aha. I, I you know, I, I'm just a fan sometimes of repeating and repeating and repeating because it's well. good. And, <laughs> and you know what? Because you don't always get it the first time, especially if this is new information for somebody. It's like, what is this open qua versus what is this closed qua? And they may be up in their head and not actually feeling the joint, right? Absolutely. Thank you for that. It's also, it's not just new information, but it's information that contradicts something that you know for sure and you've known all your life and it's wrong. You know, <laughs> it's like, but if that, that contradiction is, you know, the mind looks at it and says, oh, that's wrong. And it, it goes on. What Rick really means is this other thing here. And uh, say, like, no, 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 this is what, <laughs> this is what we're talking about here, folks. And like you said, Valerie, it's a, you got to get in there and feel it. Otherwise it just, it just words. Richard. Uh, the, for me, the opening and closing of the qua is like the qua is breathing. That's nice. That's nice. It's breathing energy in and out. Beautiful. Beautiful. Cool. Okay. On that note, the producer is telling me. Um, so <laughs> we're. Thanks, producer. Uh, thank, thank you all so like much. Your, like your granddaughter, right? On Queen of Thai. Thanks. Great. Love. Thank you so much. Love you. Okay. Love. Thank you, producer. Love you. Love you. Yeah. <laughs>